Now I will ask you to allow me to introduce logic. Some scientists think that it is made up of particles called gravitons, which move at or travel at the speed of light. However, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. But they go on to tell you what it does and what it will do, which is illogical if you don't know what something is itself. First of all, space-time is not a fabric. Space and time are not tangible things in the same way that water and air are. It is incorrect to think of them as a medium at all. So they have just admitted that space and time are intangible. What does non-tangible mean? Incapable of being touched, having no physical existence, not tangible or corporeal. Intangible! Don't you understand? They have just admitted that their alleged fabric of space-time, allegedly caused and produced by the mass of the Earth curving space-time, which they say produces gravity, which then curves matter towards the center of the Earth. Now, what did they say about the fabric of space-time? Because I know you forgot, because you don't want it to register. When you ask the right question, is space-time fabric real? First of all, space-time is not a fabric. Space and time are not tangible things in the same way that water and air are. It is incorrect to think of them as a medium at all. So do you understand why I just debunked your model, which relies on gravity? Not only relies on gravity, but alleges that gravity created the Earth, stars, moon, planets, after nothing from nowhere, at no time and no place, exploded, i.e. rapid expansion. So, an infinitesimal point of infinite density just canceled itself out. Nothing can be infinitesimal and infinite simultaneously. I'm afraid not. Space and time are not tangible. And again, they admit, however, if we are to be honest, we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. That's not them saying we don't know what it does or what produces it, but we don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. Because they'll tell you right away, we know how it behaves, or we know what produces it, the mass of the Earth curving its surrounding fabric of space-time, which they just admitted is intangible, not tangible, not physical. It is immaterial, intangible. Your entire model is immaterial and intangible. Now here is your acclaimed Professor Donald Hoffman on Lex Friedman podcast admitting the truth. So they are also intangible, doomed because they do not coincide with the laws of physics. The laws of physics are scientific physics, laws of physical nature that can be demonstrated. Okay, I apologize for that. That wasn't very loud. But when you start asking what it is, I don't know. And I will leave the link to that video in the comment section 
for you to become very furious over. Now, in conclusion, let's listen to a portion of this debate between this individual on the left, Witsit, and this globe heretic, Malachi, on the right. And you tell me who makes the valid points and who gets frustrated, uses ad hominem attack, and has feelings. Whoa! Feelings. <laughs> moves within that around the earth you're you're more dense in the air so you go down density is held together with electrostatics electrostatics is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity's even claimed to be we have a downward electric current on the earth which is 10 micro micro amps per meter that's why we have a downward bias that's why things go up and or down relative to their density relationship now substantiate your claim that we're on a ball bending convexly omnidirectionally and we're being pulled down in all directions by something called gravity that isn't defined. Okay, yeah. It, it, Watch this. This guy's going to be upset, infuriated, and let's take a look. Listen. Yeah. Right, I'm going to start pretty simple. Uh, pulls everything towards the center of this large mass. And when we stand on the planet, gravity pulls us downwards. When you go to higher elevations, you're actually are slightly further away from the gravitational pull, so you're actually a little lighter. You can jump jump a little higher, right? Really? Um, that was pretty easy. Was it? Right? And I, I understand that you're thinking that, oh, he, he doesn't know what gravity is, and oh, this is <laughs> you don't. Uh, some sort of, like, conspiracy or something. I was like, but it's not. This, we have to, okay, so like, we have to go against the force of gravity, right? And you think it's air, it's air density? Is that what you think it is, air density? You weren't listening. So, did you say everything? The reason why we're standing on the ground, you think we're being pushed down by air. Everything's intrinsically electrostatic, and then objects go up or down relative to their density relationship. That's provable. If you want to talk about science, I can scientifically test what I'm saying. I can take an object that's more dense than the air. I can drop it. It goes down. Then I can use a Van de Graaff generator to introduce electrostatics. I can make the object levitate and or just go up. I can change its weight. I can change how fast it falls with electrostatics. All objects that exist are electrostatic. The air is electrostatic. Even in a vacuum, there's electrostatics. So I've now scientifically proven that electrostatics will change the weight of an object, how fast it falls, in its direction. Now, can you do the same thing with gravity? Can you give me an experiment that actually no. isolates gravity? No, no, the heck cost? no. Okay, I'm ready to go to questions. I'm actually yeah, ready. I would be too. This is exactly how I thought it was going to go. Yeah, yeah no not, rebuttal. I'm thrilled about this. And Winston seems to be, seem to be fairly uncharitable to having like just a regular conversation about what you believe. <laughs> so, no, you're just you're just not being very genuine about the interaction. Like, no rebuttal. Like, no, this is, no, look, it, what I'm being is, is I'm, I'm being like straightforward on this, right? This is a fringe weird belief that absolutely like very few people believe. I think, this is this is what I think honestly. I think this whole thing started with a bunch of very sad men in basements trying to get a lot of very special knowledge because <laughs> their lives suck. And so they're trying very, very hard to have claims to special knowledge to try to make themselves feel more important. I also think that if you talk to any if you talk to any flat earther, any flat earthers, they're going to have completely radically different views of how this whole thing works. Some of them think the Illuminati did it. Some of them think that, no uh, rebuttal. that there's aliens somewhere that have constructed all this. You yourself think that because because NASA has some strange beginnings that it's like a giant lie constructed by I don't know who and for what purpose, right? This is all insane. So I wanted to start. I wanted to sit here and get like a real understanding of what you're of what you're what you're thinking and how. So you're that's how the table turns. This guy comes to modern day debate, finds out he has no rebuttal, and wants to turn it into a conversation. He wants to understand. The flat earth phenomenon. That's what happens when you have no rebuttal. Let's take a listen. Around the earth, you're, you're more dense in the air, so you go down. Density is held together with electrostatics. Electrostatics is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity's even claimed to be. We have a downward electric current on the earth, which is 10 micro micro amps per meter. That's why we have a downward bias. That's why things go up and or down relative to their density relationship. Now substantiate your claim that we're on a ball bending convexly, omnidirectionally, 
and we're being pulled down in all directions by something called gravity that isn't defined. Okay, yeah, it, gravity, right, let's start pretty simple, uh, pulls everything towards the center of this large mass. And when we stand on the planet, gravity pulls us downwards. When you go to higher elevations, you actually are slightly further away from the gravitational pull, so you're actually a little lighter. You can jump jump a little higher, right? Pretty neat. Um, that was pretty easy, right? It, I, I understand that you're thinking that, oh, he, he doesn't know what gravity is, and oh, this... So what's going to happen is this guy's going to become infuriated when which it chooses not to instantly believe the appeal to authority fallacy that this guy employs. He knows nothing about gravity. He is not aware that Newtonian gravity has been discarded and replaced with Einstein. This guy doesn't know it. He's just dead set that he's living on a giant spinning ball because that's what we've been taught since our youth. Okay, I get it. But where is your rebuttal? I don't want to hear your ghost stories or cool stories. I want to hear your rebuttal. And... Take a look at this guy's rebuttal. He's going to become emotional and upset. Uh, some sort of, like, conspiracy or something. I was like, but <laughs> it's not. We have to, okay, so like, we have to go against the force of gravity, right? And you think it's air, it's air density? Is that what you think it is, air density? No, Did you say everything? The reason why we're standing on the ground, you're saying we're being pushed down by air. Everything's yeah, intrinsically God. electrostatic, and then objects go up or down relative to their density of relationship. That's provable. If you want to talk about science, I can scientifically test what I'm saying. I can take an object that's more dense than the air. I can drop it. It goes down. Then I can use a Van de Graaff generator to introduce electrostatics. I can make the object levitate and or just go up. I can change its weight. I can change how fast it falls with electrostatics. All objects that exist are electrostatic. The air is electrostatic. Even in a vacuum, there's electrostatics. So I've now scientifically proven that electrostatics will change the weight of an object, how fast it falls, and its direction. Now, can you do the same thing with gravity? Can you give me an experiment that actually isolates gravity and proves it? So now this guy is going to have his turn at rebuttal, and you will not hear any rebuttal of any sort. Just this garbled word gumbo nonsense as follows. Pause. Okay, I'm ready to go to questions. I'm actually like... Yeah, I would be too. This is exactly how I thought it was going to go, yeah. and I'm not, I'm not thrilled about this. So, Old Witsit asks him if he can demonstrate gravity, if he can test gravity and with the scientific method. Here we go. I'm now scientifically proven that electrostatics will change the weight of an object, how fast it falls, in its direction. Now, can you do the same thing with gravity? Can you give me an experiment that actually isolates gravity and proves it's the cause? Okay, I'm ready to go to questions. <laughs> this is exactly how I thought it was going to go. Yeah. And Why'd not, you even come? About this, and Winston seems to be <laughs> seems to be fairly uncharitable to having like just a regular conversation about what you believe and why. So no, you're just, just you're just not being very genuine about the interaction, like. I no, this to is, you. no, look, it, what I'm being is, is I'm, I'm being, like, straightforward on this, right? This is a fringe, weird belief that absolutely, like, very few people many. believe. I think, this is, this is what I think, honestly. I think this whole thing started with a bunch of very sad men in basements trying to get a lot Stumble. of very special knowledge because their lives suck. And so they're trying very, very hard to have claims to special knowledge to try to make themselves feel more important. I it's also not think, special knowledge. It's knowledge that's been hidden from you. And the individual to your left, or to your right, just demonstrated the scientific method which gravity lacks. They don't know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way. It's doomed. I will show you another physicist admit the same. If you talk to any, if you talk to any flat earther, any flat earthers, they're going to have completely radically different views of how this whole thing works. Some of them think the Illuminati did it. Some of them think that, well, uh, the, that there's aliens somewhere that have constructed all this. You know they don't. Think not that a, there's not a flat earther worth his salt that believes in aliens. Outer space is fake. Second law of thermodynamics, entropy, and tropic law, gas behavior debunks your stupid model. I'm done with this. I might leave the link to this debate so you can 
come here yourself and watch this guy Malachi Globe Heretic just embarrass and humiliate himself. I don't even know why he came to this debate. And here we are. Now listen closely as this acclaimed physicist Eric Verlin admits that gravity isn't an, an illusion. It's based on assumption and supposition followed by description that is based on said assumption and supposition. He tells the truth. Listen closely. Okay, so hopefully you caught that. There's nothing that goes on in between the Earth and the Moon. Gravity is an illusion. It's based on assumption and supposition. And description of the assumption. Let's listen again. Your model is debunked. And they admit it. Watch how he's sweating bullets, gulping down, red and flushed face. Take a listen to this guy. He's sweating bullets. Gulp. Then, then had to write down a, a, a law that described that when two masses are at a certain distance, how they attract each other. But he was also not very happy with the fact that he should just uh, assume that these things, uh, these objects, uh, attract each other and without even anything in between. So if there are two masses in empty space, there's no uh, nothing that, that really happens between them. But Did you hear that? There's nothing that happens in between them. And it is a fact. Gravity itself has never been directly detected, identified, isolated, or harnessed on the Earth. Yet it's doing all these things. And what do they introduce? Flat Earth damage control? LIGO? Detected gravitational waves from an incident a billion years ago? Two black holes collide and become one black hole? I'm sorry, but that contradicts physics. If two Mack trucks were to collide, they'd be destroyed. They would not combine into one super Mack truck. It is nonsense. They cannot directly detect, identify, isolate, or harness gravity itself on the Earth because it's a fiction. Gravity is not real. They use it. To promote their false narrative, gravity is assumption, supposition, and description based on the assumption and supposition. There you have it. Your model is debunked. You must face reality.